Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Honer and Mark Friedel from Kemp Point. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, and no surprise today, the featured story is regarding the weather, especially in the Gulf Coast. The U.S. Gulf, Gulf Coast began to emerge from the deep freeze that brought the coldest temperatures in more than a century to the region. But pet petrochemical producers have a long haul ahead for potential damage assessments and plant restarts. A source said industrial plants in the region are built to withstand hurricanes, but not sustained sub freezing temperatures with millions of exposed pipes. That's no surprise. Restarting the production units will depend on different factors ranging from fixing damage caused by cold weather, restoring utilities, regaining access to natural gas and power supplies, or even just affording the natural gas and electricity spot prices that have rocketed during the storm. Yeah, I mean, this is um, right now, this is the topic that everyone is trying to figure out how they're going to tackle. Um, I think clearly when you look at uh, chemicals and raw materials, Texas is the focal point for it. And, um, you know, you're starting to hear stories where clearly supply is going to be a problem. You're just the materials not going to be available. Um, pricing is going up. Uh, you know, it may double overnight, uh, but there's just no supply, no material. And so it's it's very interesting right now. And I think it's only going to escalate. That's just my view. And it's expanding on um, an already tight supply in the market. So this is just adding additional gasoline to the fire. Um, this is all that anyone's talking about right now. Uh, supply issues, supply constraints. Um, I mean, we've seen some products that have seen three price increases in the matter of you know days. Yeah, you, you bring up a good point because um, as we were coming into this, you know, our previous discussions and talk was around expanding demand because um, it's coming roaring back. Uh, manufacturing's up, everything's up. So you already had a strong demand. You already had uh, problems with supply chain, especially out of um, Asia um, and shortage in containers, uh, drums, et cetera. And then you you drop this in the middle of it and it's it's a supply disruption like we haven't seen. So chemical supply disruption is significant and will affect petrochemical trade flows between the US and Asia and Europe. Many producers have declared force majeures and, our, and market sources said restarts are expected to be gradual as inspections could be lengthy given the need to assess any leaks or cracks in pipes and they need full power restoration to conduct those inspections. So obviously this weather and the impacts isn't uh, localized, it, it impacts the entire globe. The severe winter storm and ultra low temperatures on the U.S. Gulf Coast put a deep freeze on the nation's petrochemical sector with multiple crackers and refineries shutting down amid already tight markets. While it will take weeks for many of the plants to restart, the impact on supply will be felt for months to come with ripple effects across the globe, tightening key markets even further. Yet, as was the case with Hurricane Harvey, the earnings impact on U.S. chemical producers is likely to be a net positive with higher margins ultimately outweighing the, temp the temporary loss of volumes. Yeah, that's crazy. You, you think about how much volume potentially is at risk and but at the same time, um, <laughs> margins have to make up for that. So you, clearly we're already starting to see some of those pricing increases and more probably on the horizon. Yeah, and I don't know how you define temporary. Um, you know, I'm hearing more and more people talk about how the supply disruptions, um, even going into this uh, cold weather snap, lasting well into the summer, uh, could be six months or more before people catch up. So I, I don't know if that's a temporary loss of volumes, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, good point. All right, so on to uh, rail volumes. 
So railroad companies continued on Friday to warn customers to expect delays because of the cold weather. Because of road closures, Union Pacific said some of its crew are having problems getting to work in several locations. North America weekly whale drops year a year on declines in Canada and Mexico. During the week of February 13th, chemical rail car traffic in North America decreased by 1.6% year over year, and volume was down almost 3% from the previous week. All right, our final weather related story, um, and it's about the oil and gas industry. The Arctic blasts wreaking havoc across Texas has caused the largest disruption to U.S. oil production in history, pushing crude prices over $60 a barrel. U.S. oil production has fallen by a third or an estimated 3.5 million barrels per day after freezing temperatures immobilized well equipment, knocked out communications to remotely operated wells, and made travel treacherous for oil field workers looking to restart or repair facilities. Uh, so we're going to be seeing uh, higher dollars per gallon at the pump too, it looks like. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, so on to new product introductions and company announcements. Um, Argentina-based food player Grupo Arcor and ingredient solutions provider Ingredion Incorporated have joined forces to create a joint venture. The JV also aims to broaden food and beverage ingredient offerings to customers in Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay. The JV's manufacturing facilities produce value-added ingredients such as glucose syrups, maltose, fructose, starch, and maltodextrins, essential to the food, beverage, and pharmaceutical industries. Yeah, this, is a, this is a cool story, and Ingredion is becoming more and more of a global player in the food, uh, beverage, and pharmaceutical industries. This is just another opportunity for them to, to reach further. All right, another cool story, 3M has announced Clean and Protect Certified Badge Program is a comprehensive system for cleaning, monitoring, and protecting facilities. The program was designed to provide facility management teams with effective cleaning and disinfecting solutions and training to allow for us a safer return to normal activities and operations. Although teams are working hard behind the scenes to reopen safely, being able to provide a visual cue that illustrates their commitment to clean is important because even as the pandemic, pandemic slows, guests and employees may still have fears about the cleanliness of public spaces. Wow, that's just a, a pretty brilliant strategy for, from my viewpoint. 3M is uh, good at branding and it's beyond consumer products now. It's now also a certification to a clean workspace. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so now in mergers and acquisitions news. Once again, the German chemical maker Lanxis is acquiring a U.S.-based specialty chemical company. Five years after acquiring Chemtura, Lanxis has announced a deal to purchase Emerald Kalama Chemical for $1.1 billion. Based, based in Vancouver, Washington, Emerald Kalama has around 500 employees and posted sales last year of $425 million. About 45% of its sales are in North America, Langsa says. The seller is American Securities, a private investment firm that has owned Emerald Kalama since 2014. Well, Langsa is becoming more and more of a large conglomerate holding company um, with a lot of acquisitions over, over the years. And uh, Emerald Kalama to me is always a, a, a big player in Benzoic chemistry. I'm assuming there's some uh, synergies from a backward integration standpoint. All right, and in our final story, Tenant Company completed the sale of its coatings business, Tenant Coatings, to Sherwin-Williams. The sale of Tenant's coating business is our latest move in the ongoing implementation of our enterprise strategy, specifically winning where we have a competitive advantage, Tenant CEO Chris Killingstad said. He went on to further say, by divesting a business that is not central to our core strength, in industrial and commercial floor cleaning, we can redirect resources towards more strategic and profitable activities. All right, well, that's that's it for this week's editions of Industry Reactions. Uh, we will return next week with a fresh batch. Um, until then, stay safe and really more importantly, um, stay warm. <laughs> 
and hopefully uh, your business isn't too disruptive during some of these crazy events in the last week. All right, take care. Thanks.